Hello, this is Mr. Weirich, and today I'll be talking to you about Lesson 2-6. This is Chapter 2, Lesson 6. We've already gone past the midway point of the chapter, and we're starting into some stuff that will probably be a little bit more familiar to you, but not quite in the same format that you're used to. What we're dealing with here is algebraic proofs. This is a two-column proof, a formal proof. Um, this is what your parents have probably been telling you about, either horror stories or something that they remember fondly from geometry, and we're going to kind of go through one here together to show what we're talking about. Now, when it's algebraic, that means we are doing algebra. So this comes back to all the stuff that you were doing last year. We're going to use the numbers, and we're going to use the properties that we know from algebra to move forward in this. So instead of just solving the problem, we have to say why we can solve the problem the way that we are doing it. So it's really just the same kind of stuff from algebra, it's just a little bit more in depth, a little bit more explaining to do. So in our two column proof, the left hand side is the statement, the right hand side is the reason. And we always start off number one with, this is the information that we were given. Uh, we take it to be true that this is what they gave us. So I put up here, here's angle one, here's angle two. Uh, angle one is six x plus five, angle two is 30. And I'm supposed to find the value of x. Okay, I am given this illustration, so angle one and angle two are vertical angles. So I put that as my statement, angle one and angle two are vertical. Um, that was given to me in the illustration. Uh, step number two, angle one is congruent to angle two because, uh, and this is not quite the algebraic part, but it's definition of vertical angles. Okay. So we know that vertical angles are congruent. We already talked about the fact that vertical angles are congruent. So this is where we start going from there, okay? We can say on number three that six X plus five is uh, congruent or equal to X plus 30, okay? And this would be substitution. We know that angle one is six X plus five. We know that angle two is X plus 30. So we put those in. Um, we use a subtractive property. Okay. Subtract property. And we write out this step. So six X minus X plus five is equal to X minus X plus 30. As long as we do the same thing on both sides, the equal sign, it works out fine. So uh, then we write the result of that. So it'd be uh, on our next one. Well, yeah. Okay. This is, this is what happened. We use our subtract property here. We come up with uh, 5x plus 5 is equal to 30. Um, and then we're going to use the subtractive property again. Um, so we have 5x uh, plus 5 minus 5 is equal to 30 minus 5. So um, this would give us a 5x, and I'm going to go ahead and put this, 5x divided by 5 is equal to 30 divided by 5, and that's going to be our division property. As long as we do anything um, on one side, we can do the exact same thing on the other, but we have to say what we're doing. Okay, and I'm abbreviating some here. You can take a look at the examples that are in the book. They're doing a, a similar kind of thing. Um, but I come up with x is equal to 30. Um, it's my final solution. Okay, this is what I came up with due to it. So it took me a few steps uh, and I had to write down a lot, but this is what I have come up with. Okay, so uh, take a look at the examples. Make sure you go to the uh, beginning page of this lesson. Take down that little cheat sheet there that's this division property, this substitution property, this addition property. It's stuff that you already know, but you're going to have to kind of remember names about. Uh, if you have any questions about this stuff, Come in with them, uh, be ready to go, and we'll get started on the homework. We'll see you then.